in this video we'll talk about influenza virus so first we'll talk about the classification and structure second we look at the clinical presentation of influenza then we'll talk about the risk factors and epidemiology and lastly we'll talk about the treatment options and vaccinations etc so stay tuned till the end so influenza virus is the culprit behind seasonal flu and basically we, we all have experienced this kind of seasonal flu most likely we have also been infected by this virus it's an rna virus and it is generally transmitted by, via respiratory droplet when an infected infected person cough or sneezes it can basically trans get transmitted to the next person and it basically affect the upper respiratory tract of an individual now let's look at more about the influenza virus it belongs to the family orthomyxoviridae and it has a virion which is enveloped spherical and filamentous its genome is segmented and this genome has RNA which is negative sense single stranded and it has eight segments actually it has two important surface protein hemagglutinin which helps the virus to bind to the surface sialic acid receptors and neuraminidase which facilitates the release of the virus which is newly formed in a cell now let us look at the viral particle and the structures in a bit more details this is the envelope generally it is derived from the host cells this is basically hemagglutinin, which helps the virus to attach to specific cell surface receptor. Neuraminidase, as we mentioned before, it helps to release the virus from a new infected cell. There are RNA genome, there are nucleocapsid proteins, matrix proteins, there are many RNA polymerases which are used to basically uh, make new proteins and replicate the genome also. Now, there are also internal proteins such as M1 and M2 matrix protein, nucleoprotein NP, NS1 and NS2, all these provide important function to the viruses. Just to do a quick recap, it falls under RNA virus, single-stranded negative sense RNA virus and the family is orthomyxoviridae. By the way, we also talked about rhabdoviridae, polymyxoviridae family viruses. Uh, you can quickly get the link in the i button. Now, there are different subtypes of influenza virus such as influenza A, influenza B and influenza C and these are the most uh, ma major ones in the family. There is also an influenza D type which is not very important. But anyway, influenza e, A is the most, uh, 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 most big, biggest culprit among all of them because this is responsible for pandemic. It can infect human, birds, pigs, etc. Influenza B cause uh, seasonal epidemics it's less dangerous than influenza a but more dangerous than influenza c influenza c is mostly basically uh, cause mild infections and it doesn't cause any kind of pandemic or epidemic like situ situation it can affect humans and pigs also now since it's a upper respiratory tract uh, respiratory tract disease so it would uh, generally be transmitted through the drop droplet and would affect the respiratory epithelial cells so here we are looking at some respiratory epithelial cells which has uh, silic acid receptors on top of them and they literally be they are used by the virus to get into the cells so here we are looking at only one upper respiratory tract epithelial cells so basically the hemagglutinin protein or h protein binds to the receptor allow the viral uh, envelope to fuse with the cellular membrane and thereby all the genetic content of the virus is released in the cytoplasm now the negative strand single stranded rna is basically in the cytoplasm and it is free it gets converted into a transiently positive sense rna that is used as a template to make more negative sense rna so this is the viral replication cycle this positive strand rna is also used by the host cell to produce the, some of the viral proteins these viral proteins get packaged in the ER and the Golgi apparatus and use the cellular secretory pathway to be trafficked to the specific location on the membrane. Meanwhile, in the membrane, there are spike proteins which are binding to the plasma membrane and forming a scope to make a new viral particle. Later on, the uh, newly, newly replicated DNA and synthesized protein all assemble together to form a virion particle which can bud off from the cell and as we mentioned earlier neuraminidase actually help in this process.
So let's talk about mode of influenza virus transmission. As we already said, respiratory droplet is the biggest culprit in terms of spreading the infection. But apart from that, sometimes aerosol might be another risk factor in this case. And contact with contaminated surface, such as like touching a table which is already having some sort of droplet of an infected person and then touching the face or ears or eyes, that might transmit the virus infection, just like the COVID infection. Okay, so based on uh, distance to an infected person, the chance of getting infection is uh, different because the respiratory droplets are big, so they settle down. So if the distance between an infected person and a non-infected individual is less than one meter, then droplet infection is a big cause. Now, aerosol infection is very reported for mumps and measles, etc., but not for uh, influenza virus that much, but still there is a risk factor also. Now, most likely the symptoms of the virus, so the virus, some per person is more likely to spread the virus one day before the sim symptoms appear and five to seven day after the symptoms disappear. So in this long period of time, they are capable of shedding the virus uh, or transmitting the virus to a next individual via cough or, co cough or sneezing. So transmission often happen via close contact or transmission can happen in a population also. Uh, especially if uh, there are places like uh, public gathering, classrooms, crowded bus, etc. That can help th these kind of viruses to spread very rapidly. Now, there are two important concepts regarding influenza virus, which makes it quite different from other viruses. So these are RNA viruses, so they have high rate of mutations. So there is something called antigenic drift. So these are minor change in the HA and NA proteins due to a point mutation in the viral genome. So that lead to change of their some, some of the HA and NA that might alter the affinity of the virus to the cells, might increase or decrease it. So this, this consequence is like it can it can make uh, make more uh, infections because body has not encountered this kind of virus previously. So it increase the likelihood of infection and can be uh, endemic. So basically, generally, influenza A, B and C everywhere, this antigenic drift can be seen. But more dramatic is basically antigenic shift. So always remember drift is small change or subtle change. Shift is really big change. Here what happens, there is a total rearrangement and reshuffling of the genomic material that produce uh, uh, the HA or NA. And that lead to totally emergence of a new substrain. And this is most often reported with influenza A subtype rather than the other ones. So it has huge potential to create a pandemic like situation. Generally, this particular virus influenza A actually affects human birds and pigs, all of them. So that is why it has a high rate of transmission as well. So let me tell you how antigenic shift might occur. So imagine a duck has one strain of basically influenza A virus. A human has another circulating strain of influenza A virus due to some activity, especially like farming and cattle from cattle, there would be a transmission to a pig, let's say. And in the pig, it works like a genetic vessel where there could be gen genetic re or assortment that can happen. And that might totally produce a different strain, which is much, much more virulent than the earlier ones. That can lead to a major antigenic change known as antigenic shift. It has huge pandemic potential. Clinical symptoms include sudden onset of fever, cough and sore throat, muscle uh, aches, headaches, fatigue, etc. And there could be complications such as pneumonia, so there could be there could be bronchitis there could be clogged sinuses sinusitis otitis media also asthma or copd but even after the virus infection is resolved there could be long term consequences like ongoing cough and levered breathing which takes quite some time to disappear okay here are some important things that we need to remember so diagnosis of influenza can be done using rapid influenza diagnostic test which detects viral antigen it's a quick but not very sensitive method for any virus, I'm telling you repeatedly, the best method is to do qPCR. From the nasal swab, one can perform a quantitative PCR to look for virus-specific RNA, and this is the best method to de detect. There are other ways which are not prescribed, but viral culture or serology-based testing might uh, be useful in a retrospective uh, diagnosis or population type of studies. So overall, two important things that we should remember, qPCR is the most sensitive diagnostic method and proper and timely diagnosis can help controlling uh, the spread of the virus in a population. And after COVID, we learned all these lessons actually. Okay, so basically there are many non-pharmacological measures that one can follow 
to in inhibit the spread of uh, influenza or any virus that includes wearing a mask social distancing washing the hands repeatedly but overall there is basically a vaccine for influenza and these vaccines are could be live attenuated vaccines, could be basically inactivated influenza vaccines. There are different variety of it. But every flu season, there are necessity of new vaccines because influenza always change a little bit due to antigenic drift. So every time what scientists do, they look for strains that are circulating at that particular flu season and update the vaccines accordingly. So every, every individual who are at higher risk of infection, such as elderly people and young people might get vaccinated. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.